In this video, we're going to discuss regulation of gene expression in the bacteria. Gene expression is the process in which the information contained within a gene is used to synthesize a protein. Most bacterial genes are expressed all the time. However, some genes are regulated, meaning their expression is controlled. Genes are regulated in order to help a cell conserve its energy and resources. In prokaryotic cells, gene regulation often occurs through the use of operons. An operon is a group of gene and its associated regulators. There are four main components to an operon. A regulator gene, which will be located upstream from the other components of the operon. The regulator gene codes for the repressor protein. There's a promoter region where the RNA polymerase binds. RNA polymerase is needed for the transcription process. The third component is an operator region and it serves as the binding site for the repressor protein. Finally, there are structural genes. Structural genes code for the enzymes and proteins needed for the metabolic process. There can be one or more structural genes in an operon. There are two different types of operons, inducible operon and repressible operons. In the inducible operon, the gene is not normally being transcribed and must be induced. In other words, the operon is normally off and must be turned on. Whereas in a repressible operon, the gene is normally being transcribed and must be repressed. So in a repressible operon, the operon is normally on and must be turned off. Let's look at an example of each. First is the lactose operon, the classical example of an inducible operon. In a lactose operon, it is normally off and must be turned on. It will be turned on when it needs to make the structural proteins. In the case of the LAC operon, there are three structural genes, each which code for enzymes necessary for the transport and digestion of lactose. As the operon is normally off, it must be induced or turned on. In order to turn the operon on, we need an inducer. And in the case of the lactose operon, lactose is the inducer. So let's look at the parts of the lactose operon. Again, we have the regulator, and it is found upstream from the other components of the operon. The regulator codes for the repressor protein. The promoter region, which is going to be the binding site for the RNA polymerase. The operator region, which is going to be the binding site for the repressor protein. And the structural genes. Again, in the lactose operon, there are three structural genes, each coding for an enzyme needed for the digestion of lactose. Looking at the repressor protein, notice that it has two unique binding sites. One binding site allows the repressor to bind to the operon. The other binding site is for the inducer, or lactose in this case. The lactose operon is a inducible operon. Therefore, normally the LAC operon is in the off mode and does not initiate transcription. As long as lactose is not present, the repressor protein is able to bind to the operator region of the operon. When RNA polymerase attaches to the operon at the promoter region, it tries to move downstream, but it is blocked by the repressor protein. The RNA polymerase is not able to transcribe the structural genes. Because transcription cannot occur, then translation cannot occur. Without the structural genes being transcribed, no enzymes are being produced. What happens when lactose becomes available? 
Lactose then initiates the events to turn the operon on. Lactose binds to the repressor protein at the lactose binding site. The repressor protein undergoes a conformational change and notice now that it is no longer able to bind to the operator. The repressor protein then falls off of the operon. Now the RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter region and move along the operate. Transcription can occur. If transcription occurs, messenger RNA is made and translation is able to occur at the site of the ribosomes. The enzymes are then made. The enzymes, being digestive enzymes, are used to break down and digest lactose. The cell is now able to use the lactose sugar for its metabolic processes. Once the lactose has been fully digested, it is no longer able to bind to the repressor protein. The repressor protein returns to its normal conformation and is able again to bind to the operator region and the operon is now turned off. The lactose operon is an example of an inducible operon. It's normally off and must be turned on. Let's look at an example of a repressible protein. Tryptophan operon is a repressible operon. In the tryptophan operon, the operon is normally on and must be turned off when the cell no longer needs to make the particular enzymes or proteins. In the case of the trip operon, there are five structural genes, all encoding for enzymes needed to synthesize tryptophan. In order to turn the tryptophan off, a co-repressor is needed. In the case of the tryptophan operon, the co-repressor is tryptophan itself. Let's look at the components of the trip operon. It too has a regulator region upstream from the rest of the operon and it codes for the repressor protein. The promoter region is the binding site for RNA polymerase. The operator region again will bind to a repressor protein and there are structural genes. In the case of the trip opteron, there are five structural genes, each coding for an enzyme needed to synthesize the amino acid tryptophan. There is the repressor protein. It will have two binding sites, one for the co-repressor and another for the operator. And there's the co-repressor itself, in this case the amino acid tryptophan. As a repressible operon, tryptophan is typically in the on mode, synthesizing the enzymes needed for making the amino acid tryptophan. When tryptophan is absent from the environment, the repressor protein is not able to bind to the operator region because it does not have a binding site or a shape that will allow it to bind. The RNA polymerase is able to initiate transcription, translation can occur, the proteins can be made, and tryptophan can be produced. However, when tryptophan becomes abundant in the environment. It acts as a co-repressor, activating the repressor protein and turning the operon off. As a co-repressor, tryptophan binds to the repressor protein. The repressor protein undergoes a conformational change. This change in shape allows the repressor protein to attach to the operator region of the operon. Now when RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, the repressor protein blocks it from moving forward. Transcription is blocked, translation cannot occur, and thus the enzymes are not synthesized and tryptophan cannot be produced. Once the cell uses the tryptophan from the environment, tryptophan will no longer be available to attach to the repressor. The repressor will then return to its normal shape and will no longer be able to bind to the operator. 
the operon will be turned on and the cell will be able to synthesize tryptophan again. And that concludes our discussion on bacterial gene expression and operon.